Good. Uh, so we've been on a series about the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we're continuing today about that. So uh, if you would like, I'd like you to stand up and uh, we read together uh, the passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and from verse 1. Okay? Uh, here you go. Let's read. Together in, in a loud voice, yeah? Loud voice. Yeah? Come on. Okay. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding this, I do not want you to be alone more. You know that when you were pagans, somehow were alone in the One thing before I start, I want you to remember this. The Holy Spirit is not just energy or power or, uh, you know, a function or a help only. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is Lord. The Holy Spirit is Lord. And therefore... I submit to the Holy Spirit. Jesus died and rose again, went to the Father so that he can send us his gift to us, his presence, his Holy Spirit. And we better understand that this is God's plan of how to live his life here that we would be filled with the Holy Spirit and that we would submit and be led by the Holy Spirit the Bible says that as many people who are led by the Spirit they are reverse it so as many people who are not led by the Holy Spirit big question mark big question mark all right so I'll uh, I feel actually the main thing is that we would be filled with the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit is not because you deserve it and it's not because you can earn it it's just a gift a gift from God he is God's gift to us. And he gives us gifts. David was saying, he is the gift who keeps on gifting. But what we want to do, we want to seek him. We want to accept and receive the gift of the Father and the Son to us. The Holy Spirit. You accept him as Lord. 
not just as someone who would go alongside you and help you, though he does that. No, not just like someone who would actually encourage you and tell you truth, though he does that. You accept him as Lord. You submit to him. You accept what he wants to do. Which he wants all what is all in his mind is to glorify Jesus, to reveal Jesus, to show us the Father's heart. You accept him as Lord. You accept him as Lord. Your source of truth. The one who gives orders and you're the one who submits. Yeah? Okay. Let me go through the gifts because this is what is asked of me to do. And I chose six gifts. Uh, I would call them revelatory gifts uh, that because they, they contain revelation. So I'm going to drop three. Most probably I, I, I don't know how to talk about them. No, I do. But we're not going to talk about them now. Uh, just six of them. And uh, because they have that connection together. And then I want to talk and pray with you about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Would that be all right? So uh, let's go verse by verse. I think that's a good thing. Uh, now about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. And uh, another word for uninformed, I don't want you to be ignorant. Now, here's the thing. If, if Paul, okay, Paul, what's wrote, uh, written about him and what he wrote would constitute two-thirds of the New Testament, okay? So he's fairly an authority in that, okay? Paul is saying, I don't want you to be ignorant or uninformed about the gifts. Do you think it's important? He's telling the church of Corinthians that, and they already had gifts, okay? So he's not telling people who don't know, so you know when you don't know it, we just would need to tell you there are some gifts. No, 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 no. He's telling people who know and are experiencing gifts, you need to learn more. And even later on in the beginning of chapter 14, he's saying, well, I want you to pursue the gifts. It is important to understand the person of the Holy Spirit and his work and what he is giving us. It is important to know that, okay? This is not an extra. This is not something that you can drop, okay? Because maybe you're afraid or because you think it's weird. And I'm not saying it's not, you know? No, no, no. Regardless, you need to trust God and go with him. You need to stick to the truth, okay? Verse 2. You know when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to dumb idols. Okay? That's when, when we don't know Jesus, okay, whether you knew it or not, whether you had a statue in your home or not, I want to tell you, in a way or another, you were led to dumb idols. You were worshipping even yourself. Okay? Hopefully... Now, as you know Jesus, you came to understand that he is the Lord, and you're not. And you're repenting from your idolatry. Okay? Now, how can you really do that wholeheartedly? Ah, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And basically that says this. If you're worried about the fruit of a gift, you want to discern, well, a real gift will exalt Jesus. A real gift would give the glory only to Jesus. Okay? The gift of God, the Holy Spirit's mind and purpose is to glorify Jesus, okay? So you would never say, by the Spirit, Jesus be cursed. But as well, you can never really, really wholeheartedly and genuinely and honestly say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. I mean, you can say the words. 
you know, like when you're singing in a song and you're emotionally, you know, in it and you don't even understand the words of the song or you don't really mean them? We do that, don't you? I think sometimes we do that when we're worshiping. So how can I move from just saying words to wholehearted worship? I need the Holy Spirit who would work on my heart and transform me. So following uh, number four, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. The Holy Spirit is the one who is in charge, and you are not, and I am not, not, not just you, like I'm not as well, okay? He chooses, you know, he is the Lord, he is the leader, and you're not. We live our lives, okay, wanting to be our Lord and leader and wanting the Holy Spirit to come alongside us to just bless us, you know? That's not the Christian life that we're called for. It's to recognize that He is Lord and you're not and I'm not. And He chooses what to give us, when to give it to us, and maybe next time you won't be operating in this. Maybe today you would have a word of knowledge for someone, but next Sunday not. That's his choice. There are different kinds of services, or there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Jesus is the one who makes the calling. Again, you don't. He calls you. He calls you to what to do, and you don't choose. You don't have a say in it. Okay, not because, you know, it, it sounds really, it sounds really impressive to be a prophet. So you call yourself to be a prophet. Yeah, good luck with that. Okay, it doesn't happen like that. It's his calling. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it's the same God at work. Okay. God is the one who works in us to want and to, to will and to do, okay? It's God who gave you, if he gave you a certain gift or he equipped you in a certain way, that's God. Actually, in a way, you didn't have anything to do with that. Paul himself is saying that in the beginning of that epistle when he's saying, if you had that as a gift, why are you bragging? Okay? So God gives you the word, God gives you the gift, God gives you the service that you should do, and you should be grateful. And don't think of yourself more than who you are. Okay? So, you know, uh, David plays the drums. If you put me on the drums, it would be terrible. Honestly. It, it, it would be terrible. He is very talented. Who gave him that talent? Now, he should be a good steward to that talent and work on it. But even in that, God gives him grace to become a good steward. You see? It's all about humbling ourselves, knowing who we really are. I'll tell you what. Your, oh, your whole existence is because God thought of you and created you. You didn't make yourself. You didn't make yourself. I'll tell you what. Brag or think that you made yourself if you've created yourself. But the reality is, nah. All right? Okay? Remember who you are. Remember who made you, and therefore, remember who you belong to. Gifts. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit. If I am filled with the Holy Spirit, there will be manifestations. Okay? And we have nine of them. We'll, I'll just give you an introduction to six of them. Okay? Manifestation given, and they are given for the common good. That means 
they are not given for you again to brag. You know, this is not a bodybuilding contest. You know, bodybuilders are, have a, a, an amazing focus. They always look in the mirror and they... I would look in the mirror and... Okay, that's my bodybuilding part. Here's the thing. It is not about showing off. It's not. That manifestation is given to you for the common good. Even when it builds you up, because when you are built up, you will be better built and equipped to help me. Okay? The manifestations are for the common good. Now, to one is given through the Spirit a message, or in other translations, a word of knowledge. Now, so what is the word of knowledge? A word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation. So we're not talking about that you read in the encyclopedia yesterday about something and you're bringing that knowledge. That's, that's just knowledge, okay? The gift of the Holy Spirit is a supernatural knowledge of facts that you couldn't know through natural means. So it's not like I went to uh, uh, Steph and I asked her, who is that lady over there, the, the last one, the one who's wearing white thing? Okay, and then she says, oh, this is Jennifer. And I say, well, I uh, think your name is Jennifer. No, 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 that's being, that's being a Charlton. Okay, no. A supernatural knowledge coming from the Lord and he is telling you something about a person or a situation and of course for a reason. So God doesn't do that just to, you know, expose people. Okay? No, no, no. It's actually to build them up, to do something, all right? So supernatural knowledge of a fact. Now, the word of wisdom, which is the second one, is... Again, supernatural knowledge of God's heart towards, and a lot of times, is that situation. Okay? So God's heart, so wisdom is what to do and how to do it. Okay? What to do and how to do it. So God gives you a word of what to do, how to do it, so it would, things would work out. Okay, you will see things, all those uh, uh, gifts all through the Bible. A lot of times you would hear about Jesus. Jesus knew what they were thinking of. Yeah, that's that gift, word of knowledge. But sometimes he dealt with it by saying, this is what you're thinking of. Very few times, but a lot of times he dealt with it in asking a different question to get the people to the right place. So which is harder? To heal the sick or to forgive sins. You see? Okay, because he wants them to, to, to understand a certain revelation. And the way to do that, the how to do it, what to do and how to do it, is to get them to think about that. You see? Okay? Uh, word of wisdom and then... Uh, a message of knowledge, same spirit, and then faith, I'll, I'll, I'll go over, I'm, I'm not going to do it, healing powers, uh, miracles, and then another, to another prophecy. Prophecy is a supernatural revelation of things that God wants to say, God wants to do, promises, all of that, even things in the future, but, so it's a supernatural revelation about the heart of God as well. But it's uttered in your way. Okay? You are not, okay, I'm talking about the majority of times and the majority of you, you are not an Old Testament prophet. Okay? Trust me. Right? You are not having an open eyed vision or you know where you are where you cannot say anything but the word of the Lord. This is why the difference between if you are operating in the gift of prophecy or thinking that you were led and inspired to to do anything, you know, 
to say a sermon or a message or write a book or anything, okay? This is why it's not included in the Bible, all right? This is why we can filter what you're saying and agree with it and disagree with it. You cannot and you, are, you shouldn't allow yourself to do that with the Bible. The Word of God is not read with a pair of scissors, Okay, you don't like a bit in the Bible, you humble yourself and you get to understand it from the Holy Spirit bit by bit. You don't just cut it and throw it away. That won't be good for you. Okay, prophecy is a supernatural revelation that is said in your language. And this is why Paul is saying you should weigh it up. So if someone prophesies, someone should judge that prophecy. Okay, that's 1 Corinthians 14. Do you get that? Okay. Then to another distinguishing between spirits. Distinguishing between spirits is not your natural intuition. You know when you have a feeling about someone, I'm not sure. Okay, or it's not because you are paranoid. You know, there are those people who feel all the time that people are talking about them and talking against them and so on. I was like that. I'm healed now. Now I am absolutely sure that everyone talks about me and are against me. See, I'm, I'm over this. <laughs> no, no. Here is the thing. Distinguishing of spirits is a supernatural ability to know what is behind something even when it looks good. I'll give you an example, a biblical example. Jesus saying to the disciples, for example, you don't know which spirit you're talking, you're, you're coming through from when they wanted to uh, call fire from heaven. Jesus telling Peter, uh, get behind me, Satan. Another thing. Peter, in Acts 9, saying to Simon, you don't have a share in this gift, okay? Now, if Simon was just, a, you know, a confused guy thinking, well, oh, and Simon, by the way, became a Christian just before he asked for that, you know, just the power of God. No, no, Peter discerned that he wanted that power for ill gains, for the wrong, okay? That's distinguishing of spirits. He's distinguishing between. The lady that was, uh, the young slave that was walking uh, after Paul and so on in Philippi, Acts 16, uh, saying, they are the servants of the Most High. They are showing you the way to salvation. Brilliant, yeah? Okay. He's saying, there is something wrong about this. And after a few days, he, he discerned. That's a spirit of divination. And he turned around and cast it out. Okay? You cast out something that is not from the Lord. You distinguish that. All right? So, distinguishing of spirits. So, another uh, different kinds of speaking in tongues in uh, 1 Corinthians 13. In the beginning, he's saying, if I speak in the languages, tongues, languages, of men... And angels. So if you are speaking in tongues, then uh, it could be languages of humans or languages that died, uh, languages that are even, you know, alive, still used now, but could be as well in languages of angels. Okay? Now, why do we speak in languages? We speak in languages because actually we need that. You don't know how to pray for as you ought to. That's Romans 8. But another thing, there are things that are mysteries and things that uh, God wants to reveal to you that you cannot really express. But you can get it in your spirit. Okay? In a, in a very short nutshell, you know, that's why God is giving us the gift of speaking in tongues. Uh, when you, if, I don't know if you've heard things like that was for evangelism. No. Uh, that was for, uh, you know, to know which country you will go to as a missionary? No. Okay, that's not biblical. Lovely ideas and so on, but it's not biblical. That's not why, why it was in the Bible. Okay? Uh, I can talk to you about this uh, in a lengthy way afterwards. Interpretation of tongues. Now, interpretation of tongues is a supernatural revelation about what was spoken if someone stood up and gave a message in tongues. Now, here's the thing. That's not translation of that language, okay? 
No, it's it's interpretation. It's the gist of. Okay, it's the general sense of. Okay. And it's not translation. Now, why do we have that gift? Because in, in so many things, God gives interpretation. In uh, dreams, uh, you would read that in the Old Testament all over, okay? In a, in a picture that we have and we don't understand what it is, okay? Uh, God would give an interpretation. But as well, for, and that's the main thing, for the common good, to build the church up. So God would want, for example, to communicate something to the church, and he would choose not to communicate it through a prophecy, but to communicate it through the, how the body would work together. So someone would pray in tongues, maybe another as well, and then someone would get, or two would get, the interpretation of those messages. And what does that mean? All right? Okay. So this is the quick definition of those six okay now here is the thing it is what i would like you to keep focusing on jesus died on the cross rose again and said to us it's better for you that i would go so i can send you the holy spirit you cannot live what God has for you, what he died for, what he made access to you for without the Holy Spirit. If you think you can lead yourself or you can better yourself, you know, because Christianity is not a self-help activity, okay? Maybe you have a, an amazing will and you can work on yourself in certain areas. Can I kindly tell you it's not accepted. Only what is done through the Holy Spirit is accepted to God. God wants you to be filled with his Holy Spirit. God wants you to know that the life he created you for is from him, through him, in him, and by him, and for him. So the change that would take place in me would be by the Spirit. When I'm worshiping Him, for Him would be by the Spirit. And I, I tell you, a lot of times I feel myself, you know what, Lord? I'm stuck. I've reached the ceiling. And I don't know how to, how to break through. I'm saying good stuff, but there are the same stuff. It's old manna. Old manna. Would you feel me? Would you feel me? Because I don't want to stay in that place. And I don't know how to get out of that place. You cannot do that on your own. I was saying in the first service, living without the Holy Spirit, let's say that the 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 life that God gave you is to, is to cut one of those huge trees, you know? And you're trying to do that with your nails, you know? Trying, and, and you, get, you got the bark out. Well done. You still have that problem. And you think you're going to cut it with your nails. Yeah. Well done. No way. Not just in your lifetime. No, no, no. In all of your descendants' lifetime, they will not cut that tree. But if I'm alive and filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm living by Him. You know what Jesus said? You would say one word to that mountain, not just a tree. Mountain with all the trees that is on it and with all the rocks and the boulders that are on it. Move and be thrown into that sea, and it will. Guys, we are struggling to live for God sometimes, yeah? Or is it only me? I don't know. But I struggle to live for God. And I cannot depend on my, myself to do that. 
And I would tell you, as far as I understand the truth, you cannot live for God on your own and in your own strength. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with the Spirit. In order to know Jesus, we need the Holy Spirit. Paul is praying, he's saying, well, I'm praying for the spirit of wisdom and understanding, revelation and understanding, sorry, okay? Why? To know him, to know God, to know Jesus. Not just that, to know the hope of his calling, to be filled with that hope. I don't know how many times you wake up and you don't have hope. And when you don't have hope, you're not living really for your calling. And then you try to make anything else in order to fill yourself with hope and joy and peace. Yeah? So I pray that you would have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who gives understanding and revelation in the knowledge of who God is and know the hope and experience the hope of his calling and the riches of what he made accessible to us the inheritance his inheritance in us tangible known accessible not just that and to experience almost continuously the surpassing power of his Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It's working in you and me. The power that raised Jesus from the dead, the death of all humanity. The sin of humanity, not just your sins. You, the sin, that power that did that that resurrection works in you and works in me how amazing is that grace how amazing is that gift this is unbelievable that God himself wants to live in you and me want to pray with you but I want to read that before we finish Hebrews 2 and I'll read from uh, I read verse 3 and 4 it says how shall we escape how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation it was declared first by the Lord and it was attested to us by those who heard while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Let's not, let's not neglect what God has for us. On the contrary, let's do as Paul is saying in in. in 1 Corinthians 14, pursue. And I want to encourage you, don't just pursue gifts. I want you to pursue the gifts, okay? Pursue the gifter, if that could be a word. The one who is giving gifts. Pursue him, pursue him. Tell him I'm hungry and thirsty for you. I want to be hungry and thirsty for you. I want to be wholeheartedly longing for you and no one else and nothing else. We want to be a church that is filled with God's presence. If so, then you want to really, really long for his presence. Would you stand with me? Just start praying in your heart. Say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Come now. Have your way.
have your way. There is always more. There is always more. You haven't experienced all what Jesus has for you. There is more in your inheritance. And the one who would show you your inheritance. Don't worry if you are afraid to kind of give control to the Holy Spirit. Just know. Look at what Jesus has done for you. How much he loved you so that he would come, empty himself from his glory and and die for you and face the enemy for you and rose again for you. There can't be anything that God will give you that is bad because he is good. He is good. He is good and he's good all the time. Maybe this is your first time even, maybe even you don't know Jesus. Just say, God, would you, if you're that good, would you reveal yourself to me? Would you touch me? Would you show me how to seek you wholeheartedly? If you've been dry for a while, or just say, Holy Spirit, come. Come. Revive me again. Just surrender. Surrender. Open your hands maybe and just put them in front of you and say, Holy Spirit, come. Come. Have your way. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are the life giver. You're the air I breathe. I can't live without you. Thank you, thank you that you long to make me alive by Jesus' grace. Thank you that you want to live in me. Oh, come, come, have your way. Have your way over my mind, over my behavior, over my memories, over my attitudes, my priorities, my ambitions, my dreams. The things that I believed in for a long time and I don't want to let go of. Have your way. Have your way. I'm not going to hold anything back from you. I'm not going to hold back anything from you. Have it all. Have it all. You'd be everything to me. The life that I live. Everything that I would move on for. You, Holy Spirit, have your way. In your heart. In your heart, pray. Seek Him wholeheartedly. 